The new Peter Pan and Wendy trailer dropped and... Good lord, the only Neverland I want to visit is the land where this soon-to-be-failed attempt to cash in on nostalgia with modern sensibilities was never created. So welcome back to Words of Paradise, I'm your host, Leon Idol, and it's time that we talk about something that's been going on in Hollywood for quite some time now, something that won't be controversial at all for a white boy like me to talk about, race swapping. As we've seen in recent years, race swapping has become a common practice in Hollywood. Characters that were once portrayed as one race are now being played by actors of another race, most commonly white characters being replaced by people of color, but that's not always the case. And while some may argue this is a step towards inclusivity, others may view it as a cheap way to score social justice points. But let's take a step back and compare this to the race swapping of the 90s and 2000s. A lot of people act like race swapping is a new thing in Hollywood, but this has been happening for years. The reasoning, however, I'd wager is different. At least it seems like that to me. Michael Clark Duncan as the Kingpin in Daredevil, John Leguizamo as Luigi in Super Mario Bros, Will Smith as, um, whatever the dude's name was in Wild Wild West, quality of these films notwithstanding, these all seem like they were done for the right reason. Michael Clark Duncan was an amazing actor, and he absolutely nailed it as Wilson Fisk. Will Smith was literally the biggest actor in the world at the point, fresh off of massive successes like Men in Black and Independence Day. They were banking on his star power, not his race. And John Leguizamo was Luigi? Uh. Oh, okay, I got nothing. That's a pretty whack casting. But the reason wasn't forced diversity. What about Billy D. Williams as Harvey Dent in Batman? Another brilliant casting that fans completely bought, and it is downright criminal that we didn't get to see him as Two-Face in Batman Forever. Fast forward to today, and suddenly race swapping is all about politics. We can't just cast the best actor for the job anymore. We have to make a statement. We have to show that Hollywood is diverse and inclusive, even if that means changing the ethnicity of beloved characters like Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Well, should we care about that? I, I, I mean, a mermaid's a mythical creature. Th th they're not even real. Should we really care about a race swap of fictional characters, let alone a fictional character of a fictional creature? Well, yes and no. There, there is more to it than that. Not all modern race swaps are bad. Nick Fury was race swapped in the comics from a white guy to a black guy to have him show up as the black version in the movies, and Sam Jackson, of course, kills it. Aquaman was originally a white guy, and the race swap isn't what makes the character in the DCEU so bad, it's the fact that he's played by a talentless heartthrob, Jason Momoa. That's right, I said it. What about Heimdall? Idris Elba is one of the most talented dudes in modern Hollywood. No one's up in arms over the fact that this fictional Norse god has been race swapped. So... When does it matter? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for diversity and representation, but when it's done solely for the purpose of ticking a box, it loses authenticity. It's like when you go to a restaurant and they have a vegetarian option on the menu, but it's just a sad salad. Sure, that's technically an option, but it's not really a satisfying one. It matters when it's clearly done for artistic purposes, not when it's a cold, sterile corporate move as a way to push an agenda or to score social and political points. And that is what loops us back to Ariel. There's no doubt that Hallie Paley can sing. Girls got pipes. But is she any better at singing than any other white girl out there that could have been cast? The House of Mauschwitz has gone out of their way the last several years to preach about diversity and inclusion and basically act like Hollywood has only been a place for white dudes until 2014. Alright, I guess Agent J, Blade, Jordy Laborge, Tiana, Detective Lee, and Private Vasquez just never existed. That's, that's cool. But when you get articles like this, and this, oh and of course this, and the home run that is this, it feels less about artistic freedom and telling stories with morals and lessons that's importance far exceeds skin color, and instead being lazy and focusing on the bare minimum, literally skin deep issues. Lazy. That's what makes Ariel, and by extension, many other modern race swaps a problem. It's lazy. It's giving non-white people the white folks sloppy seconds. Hey Jerome, you want a cool new character to identify with that you can look up to and be inspired by? Here's Barry Men Spider-Man. We don't want to put the work in to create your generation's static shock. We'd rather just look good on the surface level and let the Twitter masses pat our backs and stroke our mouse ears for how much we're doing for you people of color. Pay no attention to the fact that we thanked a concentration camp in China where they hold Muslims. You have black Tinkerbell now. Guess Kwanzaa came early for ya. But the problem doesn't start and stop at Disney. Let's take a look at the Batman. Sure, Jeffrey Wright's a good actor and all. But did it add anything to Commissioner Gordon to make him black? Why not have him play Lucius Fox, an existing black character that's been in the comics since the 70s? Was Jeffrey Wright really the right actor for the role? Or did they need to fill a diversity quota? And instead, Ray swapped a character since Lucius isn't even in the film. What about Fox pre-Disney buyout? Michael B. Jordan is renowned as an actor now, but everyone, 
himself included probably, has tried to forget about his role as Johnny Storm, a.k.a. the Human Torch in fan stick Now, this one could have been forgivable if they also made Sue Storm black, but they didn't. Now Sue is adopted. Is it really worth changing a character's entire backstory just to add diversity? It, it doesn't feel organic at all. Instead, it feels like a political and social move as nothing of value is added to the character as a result of the new backstory and race swap. This also doesn't stop at movies. Velma managed to unite both Antifa and the Nazis by being a prime example of how to not race swap characters. Is anyone even going to want to watch Season 2 now that the morbid curiosity is worn off? I Scooby don't. What about in board games? Clue now has a diverse edition because I remember sitting down with all my friends and saying, yeah, I want to play Clue tonight, but there aren't enough black people who could be the murder victim, so let's play Scrabble instead. And no, abbreviations don't count. Or in Magic the Gathering, they're doing a crossover event with Lord of the Rings and Aragorn is black. Is this an innocent artist depiction of the character or forced pandering for diversity and inclusion purposes? Probably the latter since Witches of the Coast have doubled down on their push for modern sensibilities. And let's not forget, there are those that make a pretty convincing argument that is disrespectful to the original source material and spits on the art the original creators worked hard to bring into the world, only to have it changed by people far less talented than them because they lack any sense of originality or skill. It's the equivalent of a stand-up comedian getting on stage and telling another comedian's jokes, but with far less comedy and no sense of timing, and then claiming, oh no, it's, it, it's a cover, like they're a famous rock star up there or something. No, 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 it's not a cover, you're just a talentless hack, and that's also stealing. Look, race swapping is an issue, but it's a relatively nuanced issue, and just dismissing folks as racist or woke whenever they want to have a conversation about it isn't exactly the most productive thing we can be doing. It's pretty obvious that if you look at race swaps from the 90s and early 2000s and compare them to today, there is a noticeable difference in the quality of the characters and the work put into them. But at the end of the day, it also is kind of important to remember that uh, these are just movies and TV shows. They're meant to entertain us, not solve the world's problems. Looking at you, Disney. So let's try to find a balance between authenticity and inclusivity, maybe throw in a few good jokes while we're at it, and it's like when you finally find a restaurant that does have that delicious vegetarian option, and it actually satisfies you. It is a win-win for everyone. Except the vegetarians. There's no winning with you people. But those are just my thoughts and opinions on the whole thing. Who knows if I'm right or wrong? I mean, I'm probably right. It is me. But that being said, I do want to know your opinions as well. So let me know yours in the comments below, or let me know on Twitter where you can find me at Book the Word. I am a nerdy news channel, though I do like to occasionally do uh, little scripted videos like this just to keep y'all on your toes. So please do subscribe, check out the back catalog, and let's get back to arguing whether Lord of the Rings or the original trilogy from Star Wars is the better trilogy. Spoiler alert, the answer is neither. It's the Indiana Jones trilogy. That's right, it's all here in the Nerdosphere, and this has been Words of Paradise. It's Ryan Colt Levy, the voice of Denji, aka Chainsaw Man, and you are watching Words of Paradise.